Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is September 12th, 2013. I am your host, Jay-Z, and this is Flashpoint Radio. Thank you very much for joining me on tonight's edition. We'll, of course, look at the Syria conflict and what has happened over the past week. Uh, the finger has been pulled from the nuclear weapon button, nuclear launch button, if you will, um, at least for now. We'll see what happens in the coming weeks, but we've got a lot of stories to get to and a lot of dots to connect to see the big picture on our foreign policy in this country and who is actually behind our government. Uh, today is 9-12, yesterday was 9-11, and well, if you have not done your research on 9-11-2001 yet, please do so. Uh, I have one thing that I always say to people when they ask about 9-11, and I say if you do not believe it was an inside job, or at least prior knowledge was had by our government, then you have not looked at all. Because those that have, that have looked, even a little bit, uh, come up with questions that have never been answered. So we don't spend too much time on 9-11, because I believe it's a straw man to keep us distracted. But if you don't believe it's an inside job, please, just look into it. That's all I'm saying. Just look into it. But we've got more important things to look at this evening, and that is, well, Syria, Russia, and our connection, the United States, to that situation. From BBC, Syria crisis, UN receives Syria chemical treaty papers. Well, what happened was John Kerry had an apparent uh, lapse in judgment and said if the Syrians were to give up their chemical weapons, uh, they would call off the strike. Russia nearly immediately came out and said, we are going to offer Syria that deal. Syria said, we'll take that deal. And now, all of a sudden, strikes are off the table. Uh, Russia and Vladimir Putin look like the leaders of the free world and working peace agreements. And John Kerry and Barack Obama have been scrambling to play catch up with their foreign policy so as to not look like complete amateurs, which they are. So what happened was Syria entered into a United Nations conference, into a treaty that bans the use and manufacture of chemical weapons. Um... It's a good thing, I guess. You know, I, I'm not a fan of the United Nations, but I'm clearly not a fan of chemical weapons. Um, but I decided to look into the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, which is the UN uh, sub-organization, opcw.org. Go look for yourself. And it has a list of the OPCW member states, which Syria will be a member of in 30 days since they have uh, submitted their paperwork to the UN. I looked on this list just to see. There's a ton of countries, um, almost, no, I don't know about almost all of them, but quite a few of the ones that you've ever heard of. But I decided to look at who's on it. Um, and two things stood out to me, and I'll just leave them with you. Uh, Iran is on the uh, Treaty Against Chemical Weapons. Now Syria is, but surprisingly absent is Israel. Now I'm not an Israel hater, I'm not an Israel basher, but... Um, should they not be held to the same standards as Iran and uh, Syria or other countries in the region or around the world? Yes, they have not signed a treaty to keep from using chemical weapons. So uh, look for them at any time to use chemical weapons, which they do. White phosphorus um, is a chemical weapon that they use, as is depleted uranium, which we use, uh, as is Agent Orange, which we used, as are a lot of chemical weapons that the United States use. I heard a stat, I'm not sure where from, but... The United States has used more chemical weapons against uh, an opposing force uh, than the entire world combined in history. So our country has used more chemical weapons than all countries combined. But John Kerry can get up on network television and tell everyone that uh, we're looking out for the good of the humanity, good of humanity, and that it is a moral crisis to use chemical weapons when we, we've done, that, done it ourselves. Moving right along, though, um, from the Washington Post, CIA begins weapons delivery to Syrian rebels. Um, not sure if those are chemical weapons they're delivering, but if they were, I, I guarantee it wouldn't be in the Washington Post. That would be uh, maybe on a YouTube video put up by the Syrian rebels. Um, but yes, uh, turns out for a couple weeks we've been arming them with light machine guns and now uh, anti-tank weaponry, anti-heavy armor weaponry, meaning RPGs. Um, maybe some tow missiles that might have been taken from, uh, you know, land-to-air missiles that might have been taken from Benghazi. Who knows? One thing to look at from this article, though, 
which shows that it doesn't matter if there's boots on the ground. We, we bought the boots that are on the ground now. We paid for the guns that are in the hands of the people that are wearing the boots that are on the ground in Syria. So it doesn't matter if there are no boots on the ground with a flag, uh, 50 stripes and, uh, or 50 stars and 13 stripes on it. But Senator Bob Corker, a Republican, remember, pressed the Obama administration uh, weeks ago when he was on the Syrian border with the rebels. He said, quote, it was humiliating. The president had announced that we would be providing lethal aid and not a drop of it had begun. Humiliating that the United States had not given weapons to Al-Qaeda to do things like murder Christians and behead uh, uh, anti-Islam or people that do not convert to Islam. Yes, Republican Bob Corker thinks it's humiliating that we are not directly arming Al-Qaeda in Syria. Um, and from all this, uh, from the... Uh, surprise de-escalation of the situation in Syria um, comes an op-ed from Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, uh, posted or printed in the New York Times this morning, yesterday actually, on September 11th, go figure. Uh, it's not a bad uh, op-ed, I must say. Uh, Putin sounds closer to Ron Paul than Barack Obama. I'm closer to George Washington than... Uh, than uh, Lenin or Stalin. But uh, read this op-ed by Vladimir Putin. The one thing that scares me is the very last line from Vladimir Putin, who used to be a KGB agent. Um, we are all different, but when we ask for the Lord's blessing, we must not forget that God created us equal. To throw that in, uh, in an op-ed to the American people, it just seems a bit odd to uh, call Christianity out uh, or, or to invoke Christianity coming from a former KGB agent who, you know, we all know what KGB agents did in the past. So uh, read it, though. Op-ed from Putin to America about Syria. Um, everybody hates it. You know, all of our politicians hate it because they are showed up as far as liberty and uh, justice by the president and former communist KGB agent of Russia. Um, yeah. Moving along, we have this story also from yesterday, broke in the morning, about Elizabeth Obege being fired from her position at the Institute for the Study of War. Why is Elizabeth Obege important? Well, we hear this from the Daily Caller, woman informing Carrie McCain's opinions on Syria, also an advocate for Syrian rebels. This is an article from last week talking about Elizabeth Obege, who was quoted, her op-ed was used by John Kerry in his plea for war, um, this article showed how she is, quote-unquote, in bed with the Syrian rebels and is clearly a supporter of the Syrian rebels, so she is not an unbiased uh, source of information. But she was fired yesterday, that's the breaking news yesterday, from her position because she lied about her doctorate. She is not a doctor, and they felt at the Institute for the Study of War that is enough to fire her. The Politico story uh, that I show up here on screen goes over how she should still be held as credible, her information is solid, and that the only thing that should be questioned is her honesty on that one decision on telling her future employer that she had a doctorate. Um, she said, quote, at the end of the article, I'm not a warmonger, I'm not advocating the United States starts a war or get in the middle of one. No, you're just working for warmongers. And how do I know that? I know that because I decided for some unseen reason to follow the thread that was behind Elizabeth Obege and the Institute of the Study of War. So I pulled that thread and saw where it went. Well, we find that the ISW was founded by Dr. Kimberly Kagan in 2007. Uh, she worked with General Petraeus in the Middle East during the, um, during the troop surge and the drawdown in Iraq. And she is a historian of war, and she decided that the world, the politicos, the politicians needed an unbiased source of information to determine their role or determine the United States policy in you know, foreign countries. The Middle East, namely, is where they focus right now. Um, and I look behind her and I see where that policy, where those unbiased information comes from. Well, she's married to Frederick Kagan. And if you look at Frederick Kagan, he is a fellow at the American Enterprise Institute giant neocon organization. And well, you go just a little further down his Wikipedia file and you find out that his brother and his father are all signatories on the project for the New American Century Manifesto 
titled Rebuilding America's Defenses. If you've not read Rebuilding America's Defenses, or at least the excerpts, please Google that. Rebuilding America's Defenses, 2000 white paper from the project for the new American century. And why is all of this important? Why the project for a new American century? Why, 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 why? Well, it flows back into current Mideast policy in regards to Syria. And if you look at the history of the project for a new American century, you realize that this presidency, this administration, is no different than the last administration and really has not been any different from any administration for quite some time. Uh, their foreign policy is exactly the same. And if you believe in military spending, nation building, and really being the policeman of the world, you should support this president just like you supported the last president, just like you supported the last warmongering president. And I'm kind of just speaking to neocons and Republicans right now. But if you go to this video, and we're going to look at just a few snippets from this video, you'll hear admissions from Wesley Clark, a four-star general. But if you watch all of this video, you will get informed on the Mideast policy and what's happening. Uh, it's an eight-minute crash course in our Middle East policy. And it, it goes on to say that it's been going on since 1991. Let's look at just a few clips from Wesley Clark and what he has to say. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later, I saw the same officer, I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still gonna attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir, he says, it's worse than that. Just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office that says we're gonna attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're gonna start with Iraq and then we're gonna move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. This country, was taken over by a group of people with a policy coup. Wolfowitz and Cheney and Rumsfeld and you could name a half dozen other collaborators from the Project for a New American Century. They wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down, make it under our control. They could hardly wait to finish Iraq so they could move into Syria. Project for a New American Century wants to turn the Middle East on its head. They want to attack seven countries in five years. Granted, their uh, timetable's off, but they're still knocking them down. They're still moving forward. Doesn't matter if their timetable's off. They're still advancing. And they're using Barack Obama and this administration to do so. So to all you liberals who love this president and are now warmongering liberals, notice that his policy is the same policy, that our foreign policy being touted by John Kerry and Barack Obama is the same policy by Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, and George W. Bush. And to all you Republicans who now are not in favor of bombing Syria, why not? Why is it okay then, but not okay now? Uh, it's time to stand for something. It's time to stand for the truth, have some actual integrity Make the hard decisions. Call your senator. Tell them you're going to recall them if they do things that you don't agree with. We have to get in the face of this tyranny. We have to recognize the evil, and then it simply goes away because we have the numbers. Overwhelmingly, we have the numbers, and we will win this. The book of Revelation says we will win this. So the ending's already written, but that doesn't mean we have to sit on the sidelines and watch the story go by. Let's be active participants in history. Jay-Z signing off for Flashpoint Radio saying God bless and keep your eyes to the sky. It keeps on raining, let this garden burn.